This is Amazon Recognition. It's a facial recognition feature that law enforcement is starting to use to track down criminal suspects. Facial recognition technology has been one of the biggest ambitions of tech and AI. Amazon got into it because they saw a product that could be used in a lot of different arenas. Amazon founder and chief executive Jeffrey P. Bezos owns the Washington Post. But there's also a huge law enforcement angle here too. It's currently used by the Washington County Sheriff's Office in Oregon outside of Portland. They're using it in a really unique way. We knew we had already a huge database of jail booking photos that are already of public record, and we knew we had unidentified suspects in criminal investigations. And I thought that that was a pretty easy way for us to test out the possibility of facial recognition without spending a lot of money. The system looks at 300,000 mugshots currently in their jail database to see whether a suspect caught on camera was the person they're looking for. In Washington County, the deputies say they use it as one of many investigative tools. The photos and video they use to match suspects come from all over. Eyewitnesses' cell phone videos, in-store surveillance video, and even cameras installed around people's homes. When they run the image of a face of someone they're trying to find, the system automatically tries to match it to whoever else is in the jail mugshot database. We have the capability to do it as detectives from our desk and our patrol deputies from the car. You start with any digital image or a still photo from a video. It's looking at the measurements of a face. So it's looking at the separation between the eye and the mouth and the mouth and the nose and how all of those stats combine to create a whole face measurement. Looks like it mapped his face correctly. And that's the important part of the, uh, of the process is making sure that the face was mapped correctly so that we know the measurements uh, can be searched against the measurements that are stored in the cloud. The Washington County Recognition System right now returns five results for every facial search, and those five are listed in terms of which the machine thinks is the best match. It doesn't give what they used to call a confidence score to prevent the worry over the system steering the human deputy to a match that they wouldn't otherwise have looked at. We have done hundreds of searches over the last couple of years, and we have dozens and dozens of cases that we have solved. Probably 75% of the time it's been helpful. It's really easy to use. It's, um, you know, so simple a cop could use it, right? The sheriff's office here in Oregon says they're really aware of privacy concerns. There are misconceptions out there that you click a button, you get the result, and you march to someone's house and arrest them. We've never done that. Deputies are required to independently corroborate any other information, as well as say, yes, that's a person, or no, that's not the person. We're looking at all the same things that we used to and always have done. But it gets us there a lot quicker by getting that initial lead from the software. If people provide us these cell phone videos of a crowd and we like, okay, that person had a great vantage point, we'd like to identify that person, doesn't mean we'd run them through the software because that does not fit our policy, that does not fit our guidelines. None of the data could replicate any face or person information. It is only metadata measurements of faces. And that's what actually gets stored up into the cloud. So that actually helped us out with our concerns about uh, security, knowing that we're not actually sending pictures to the cloud, we're just sending measurements. But this is a really new technology being used in criminal justice, and people's lives are at stake. There are some huge privacy bias and accuracy concerns. Public defenders here in Oregon are just starting to see this technology being used in cases where suspects are being arrested. Based off of the results, recognition has returned. I don't think the use of this is widely known. It seems like the kind of technology um, that once implemented, it's very hard to walk back. We, as a defense attorney, cannot question, you know, how did the process work? When a defense attorney seeks to discover information like that, the corporation says, no, that's proprietary, it's protected by copyright. There's no ability to challenge the accuracy of those identifications. We already are challenged every day by things in the criminal justice system, things like the over-representation of minorities in the criminal justice system, things like implicit bias. I think it's too soon to tell in what ways some of those issues will be implicated by this technology, but it is striking that even so early we're seeing studies where there are problems with reliability that are, are greater potentially for people of different, different ethnicities or genders. In the hands of someone who may not be well trained, may have power issues, may have biases, it could be a very dangerous tool. The broader implications of having recognition is this could potentially be used by police forces across the country and could be connected to big databases of people's faces that go far beyond just jail mugshots. That would be my concern. 
if this has really helped us catch, quote, the bad guys, then we can expand and start swooping in, you know, Facebook photos, YouTube videos, and everything, because the more people we have, the more success we're going to have. We are fully supportive of limiting the use of this technology and having legislature in place for that to happen. We want to be part of that conversation. We want to be a model for the rest of the country to say, hey, this is an appropriate use of the technology. There are also questions of the relationship between Amazon and the local police force. These agencies are nonprofits, and their mission is to help public safety. But Amazon is a multi-billion dollar company and the seller of the product. Amazon is incentivized to get this technology into as many places as possible and to refine it so they have the service everybody wants to buy. In the end, privacy advocates are worried that this alliance and facial recognition technology in general will put normal people at a disadvantage. The government is incredibly powerful. They bring, they bring a lot to bear against an individual citizen in a case. You couple that with Amazon, <laughs> um, that's, a, uh, that's a powerful uh, partnership.